So from time to time, we get a client that needs to load and listen to Vichy Dial on a daily basis. Uh, and it's kind of a hassle for us because we have to have somebody ready to do that uh, when they're ready to do it. Uh, so to make this process more efficient, I developed an application that will allow a client to use a web interface to upload their list to us and then have it load into the dialer in real time. Now, those familiar with loading lists into VGDial know that when you upload the CSV file, uh, it allows you to map VGDial fields to the fields in the list. Uh, for our application, we decided to eliminate this step uh, because it would require the, the user, the client, to map those fields manually. Uh, and experience has taught me that it's always best to try to build a process to minimize mistakes a client can make. And also the, f the, the file structure hardly ever changes, so uh, with all the clients that we have automatic uploads for, uh, we just agree upon a file structure um, that they have to, to, to meet. Uh, we do check that file structure when they're uploading, so uh, we don't let you know, bad files go through, but it's really easier if you just don't have an agreed upon file structure, and most clients can provide that to you. Uh, in our case, we usually do it in the CSV or text format. Now, uh, this example is going to show uh, one way to, to load a dynamic list. Um, the way we're going to show you here is to have a list that gets emptied and then refilled every time a new list is loaded. Um, now, that meets the needs of this campaign because we don't need to persist that information or have multiple lists. Uh, but you can write this application if you'd like to uh, just append those new leads to a list so you have a running list or you can even have it create a new list each time uh, you upload but I, I'm not going to show you that today but it, it can be done pretty simply. Uh, the example I'm going to show you is written in Cold Fusion but you can you know write it in any language. Uh, so let's get started. There are three t tables uh, that you need to access in the Asterix database. There's the VGDAL phone codes table Vichy dial list table and the Vichy dial hopper table. Uh, the Vichy dial phone codes table needs to be queried to get all of the daylight savings time and time zone or GMT offset information. That information is needed when you load a lead into the Vichy dial list. Uh, the Vichy dial list table holds all of the new leads that we're going to load into our dynamic list. And the Vichy dial hopper table needs to be touched in order to delete leads or unload leads from a previous list. Uh, so those are the three tables you need to access in your Asterix database when you're writing this script. Uh, let's go ahead and show you. I, I created a, uh, here we are in, in Vichy Dial, our Reception 1 Dialer, and I created a test table, uh, 5150, um, and we can see right now that there are zero leads in this list. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go through the process as a client would, would see it. Um, I've already uploaded a test, so it tells me that there's one been uploaded already. But uh, here is our agreed upon file format. I've got you know, five leads here that we're going to load up. Uh, here's our agreed upon file structure or header, and then everything's you know formatted in our CSV file format. So that's the that's the list we're going to use when we upload. So I'll go ahead and select the file here, upload it and now we'll process it. And it'll go real quick here because it's only five. Uh, here we can see it sent me a notification. It tells me how many rows were processed. It tells me w if there were any failed rows. If there were, it would display all the row information. So it would spit that row back out so you could look at it, find it, fix it if you needed to, and then re-upload it. Uh, so it gives you all that information. It also sends out an email, which you probably see pop up here in a little bit. Uh, so if we go back to our reception one dialer, and I'll refresh this, and we'll see that now we have uh, five leads, new leads, not called, loaded into this list, ready to go, so they can be thrown in. Uh, so we, re uh, if we were to upload another file, it would delete these five, unload the hopper, and then up, you know reload those five into the list. So uh, I'll step through the code here I used to write this really quick, just so you can see on a high level how it was done. Um, the first block of code here just sets up our variables that we're going to use later. Uh, this block here establishes if we're in daylight savings time. So if we're in daylight savings time, then we need to uh, 
adjust, potentially adjust the GMT offset when we load the lead into the Vici dial list. Um, in order to do this calculation, I used a couple of scripts found on CFLib. Uh, in the United States, it's pretty simple calculation. Uh, all daylight savings time, or we're in daylight savings time in the United States, the second Sunday in March through the first Sunday in November. So I do some calculations here to see if we're in the second Sunday of March, if we're in the time frame of second Sunday of March to the first Sunday in November. So are you in daylight savings time, yes or no? Uh, to do this, I used two scripts from CFLib to make my life real easy. The first one was get the occurrence of the day in the month. So I needed to figure out what the day is for the second Sunday in March for the current year and the first Sunday in November for the current year. Once I had those dates, then I could plug it in. Is today's date in between second Sunday in March and the first Sunday in November? And if it is, then daylight savings time is is in 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 effect. Uh, and if uh, the area code for that lead shows that daylight saving time need to be applied, then that's what we'll do. We'll apply that daylight savings time adjustment to it. Oh, and you can see there's my notification that came in. Uh, the next thing we do is set up the variables that we expect to see coming to us in the file that gets uploaded. So all these parameters or variables represent uh, are mapped to a uh, field or a header row in our file that's uploaded. Uh, here we're doing three things. Uh, first thing we're doing is getting the GMT offset information from the VGDAL phone codes table. And we're going to hold that in a query. Uh, and then we'll do a query of queries to check each individual row or area code in each row as we're going through, looping through the file. Uh, we're deleting all of the old lists or old I lit, excuse me leads out of the list, and then we're dumping the hopper of any old leads. Uh, in this block of code, we are looping through the uh, file, and we're converting each row in the file uh, from a CSV format to an array format. And again, I used uh, a script written by somebody else. Here, it happens to be Ben Nadel. Uh, this is a great script. Ben is a, if you're not familiar with, if you're a ColdFusion guy and not familiar with Ben's blog, uh, it's definitely uh, one of the go-to resources I use. He's the uh, most elegant coder I think I've ever, ever seen. Um, but he has a handy little function that he wrote uh, that allows you to parse a CSV file and throw it into an array, and it does a lot of cleaning up of that and handles a lot of exceptions, so I rely on that pretty heavily in this script. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is look at that first row to make sure it matches our header row. And so that's what this block does. If it doesn't match our header row, then we throw an error, and right there we were bored out. Uh, if the header row passes, then we loop through each of the data rows in the, in the field, First thing we do is map all of that data from the array uh, into our variables that we set up earlier. Uh, then we do some mandatory validation. Uh, the only thing I'm mandatory validating right now is the phone uh, number. Obviously, that has to be correct in order for the dialer to dial it. Um, you can validate anything else that you want to. In this case, it wasn't necessary, so I didn't, and it just makes it for easier example here. Uh, here, we're looking for to see if this area code uh, has daylight savings time into effect. And so we're doing the queries of queries here to, uh, from the GMT data that we got earlier from the VGL phone codes table to see if daylight saving time is in effect for the area code and to get what the GMT offset is so we can set the proper time zone. Here's where we're actually applying that. So if it is daylight savings time, and we're in daylight savings time, then we set the GMT offset uh, to the appropriate time. Set that there. And then here's where we're actually doing the insert into the Vici dial list. Now, you don't have to do all of these. You can see I have a lot of null fields. Uh, I rewrite this application quite a bit, depending on 
what client needs it so I just put them all there so it's easier for me to map out but you don't by any means need them uh, but you can use it as a good example of, of what's needed and anything that I do put a variable for is pretty much mandatory so the entry date the modified date uh, the status uh, I'll let you walk through that uh, in the code but anything that I do put a value for is mandatory for that list anything else uh, you don't necessarily have to load it and it'll load as null when you when you load that in. Uh, here we're just doing some error checking uh, to add to our error message if we need to and then at the end we move that script around and do some reporting so uh, that in a nutshell is how that script was written if you have any questions about it feel free to to contact me and I'll answer whatever questions I can about it. I'll make all of these files available to you and links to all of the resources I use to create this file in the blog. Thanks.